conservative new media viewers and Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What's up? It's me, the NBA expert, Paul F. Villarreal, PFV. We are here to update the situation on the rumors and news coming out about the possibility of Dwight Howard joining the Houston Rockets, as well as new information that seems to be coming out suggesting that Jeremy Lin could be traded from the Houston Rockets in order to get Dwight Howard and or get uh, Dwight Howard's buddy, Josh Smith. So let's get right into this. Now, I came across something late last night on Clutch Fans, and I will link to it in the video description below the video player so you guys can check it out for yourself. Someone named Ron from the G put up a post, and Ron from the G apparently is, uh, claims to be an insider of some sort, you know, a basketball insider or a, a Houston Rockets insider, something. And what Ron said is that he's hearing that if Dwight Howard joins the Rockets, and that seems to be a real possibility, that Jeremy Lin could be traded in order for that to happen. Uh, now, there's various people that appear on different message boards, including Clutch fans that claim to be insiders. I know another one that has appeared on Clutch fans recently is a person known as, I believe, Cy Burks, C-Y-B-E-R-X. That person, Cy Burks, seems to have ties to the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, and seems to have a relationship with Jim Buss uh, himself. Jim Buss now, I believe, is, is probably the acting owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Jim is, of course, the son of uh, recently deceased owner Jerry Buss, or former owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, now, I've never come across Ron from the G before, so I can't vouch for him. I don't know him, uh, but what he's saying makes sense, and I'll go over why that is uh, in, as we get into this video a little bit more. So even though I don't know Ron from the G, what he's saying would fit, and so it, it kind of gives me a little bit more of a sense of credibility to what he's saying or credibility about him as a potential insider. Now, the reason why you get stuff, the reason why you get people that that are supposedly insiders on message boards, one, I mean, one reason is people just want to talk. I mean, if they know inside information, they want to tell people. But the real reason or a main reason why this happens is something known as a trial balloon. A trial balloon, that phrase means people will attempt something. They will experiment and say, hey, what if this happens? And they want to see how the public's going to react to it. So if you're an insider and you're contemplating trading Jeremy Lin, if you're the Houston Rockets, or you're in and around the Houston Rockets, and you're thinking about trading Jeremy Lin, then you might go on a message board or have somebody else go on a message board for you and put it out there. And then you want to see how the, the public's going to react to it. You want to see how the Houston Rockets fans are going to react to it. And you want to see how the Jeremy Lin fans are going to react to it. This happens a lot. Uh, it's almost like, you know, when you make a movie, you'll, you know, you hear about they'll have like test audiences because they want to see how the audience reacts to the movie. And then if they like certain parts, they'll keep them. If they don't like certain parts, they won't keep them. That's what this type of thing often is. 
hey, how do you feel about it if we trade Jeremy Lin so we can get Dwight Howard? And uh, that might be what's happening right now. And uh, I've seen this before. This happens all the time in all industries. And um, we'll see. We'll see if Ron from the G is, um, we'll see what he knows. Now, this information that Ron from the G put out there reminds me of the recent sporting news article written by Sean Devaney in which Devaney apparently talked with a general manager, a GM, from in the NBA, and there was a discussion about, well, maybe Jeremy would be included in a sign-and-trade deal with the Lakers to bring Dwight Howard to Houston. Now, that article took a lot of criticism because apparently the economics and the reality about the Lakers being able to do such a sign and trade was was questionable. And I, I know that Devaney got a lot of criticism for that. But he brought up the possibility that Lynn might have to go in order for Houston to get Dwight. And so now we're hearing that again. And let me tell you why I think we're hearing that again. And this is important. Uh, and let me just say one other thing before I, I go into that. A writer named Sam Smith, who is a longtime uh, follower and, and reporter on the Chicago Bulls, I believe in February, he wrote something on Bulls.com saying that he was hearing from his sources in the league that Houston was open to trading Omer Ashik and or Jeremy Lin. But remember, that was before, and that's February of 2013, I believe. That was before Jeremy's knee had fully healed. I believe Jeremy regained full strength in his knee in March of 2013. And of course, he put up big numbers in April. His averages for the month of April were like 17 points and six rebounds. So even if Houston was thinking about trading Jeremy or they were open to it in February, I think they changed their minds about that by the time the end of the season came around. So as I've told you guys consistently, and as you know, some of you have seen me going to clutch fans and real GM and various sites and defending Jeremy. I did not think Houston was going to get rid of Jeremy this summer unless it was for somebody big like Chris Paul or something like this. But now is the first time that I actually believe Jeremy could get traded in order for Houston to sign Dwight Howard. So let's get into that a little bit more and why I think that and why that might happen. About one week ago, there was word from the Rockets that they were looking to trade Thomas Robinson in order to clear up salary cap space so they could sign Dwight Howard and possibly clear space enough, I believe, so they might be able to look at, at, at Josh Smith of the Atlanta Hawks, who is a good friend of, of Dwight Howard. Well, in that, in this past week, I don't think there's been a lot of interest, or, or maybe there hasn't been much interest around the league to get Thomas Robinson. And I also hear, you know, the name Royce White. So, the Rockets might want to move Thomas Robinson and Royce White rather than trade Jeremy Lin, but nobody might want to help them. So even though it be it could be useful to get rid of those guys' as salaries, the, you know nobody might want to take them on right now. And so you have that in the background. Uh, the other thing, though, and I believe Ron from the G said this in his post, is that apparently Dwight Howard or Dwight Howard's uh, intermediaries, his circle, 
is saying that Dwight would like to keep Omer Ashik on the team. And the reason why Dwight would probably want to do that is because Omer's a good player and he's a good backup. And so it gives somebody that, you know, Dwight doesn't have to play 45 minutes a game. and He knows that the, that the team will still be good uh, and that the center will still be somebody good. So when you put this different information together, here's what you get. You get... It really looks likely that Dwight Howard could come to Houston. I mean, this is getting more and more serious. And I believe Dwight is free to sign with Houston like July 1st, I believe. So we're, you know, we're less than a month away before Dwight Howard officially enters free agency, I think. So it looks like Dwight's very serious about Houston. But apparently Houston needs more money to sign him and or go after, you know, Josh Smith and other people. You can't, it doesn't seem like anybody wants Thomas Robinson. It doesn't seem like anybody wants Royce White. Chandler Parsons has a very inexpensive contract. His contract is very low. So even if they wanted to trade him, which I don't think they want to do, it's not worth very much in terms of salary cap. You're not getting rid of James Harden. So you're basically in a situation where Jeremy's contract might be the only realistic one that you can move so that you can clear up salary cap space. I think that's where we're at. or I think that's where we're close to being unless Houston can find somebody that wants to take on Thomas Robinson, Royce White, etc. So it's you know, I, I think this is a real possibility now. I thought that for most of the summer, I, I definitely thought Dwight Howard coming to Houston was realistic. But I always assumed he was going to come and, and Jeremy was going to be here. But now it's, you know, now I can see a scenario where that's not going to happen. And, and what happens here is, look, Jeremy has a tremendous amount of talent. Houston definitely doesn't want to get rid of Jeremy again and then have him do what he did in New York again. You know, Jeremy made Houston look stupid, basically, for getting rid of him. And they don't want to be in that position again. But if you're faced with a choice between Dwight Howard and Jeremy Lin, you're going to pick Jeremy Lin. Uh, Excuse me. You're going to pick Dwight Howard just because of where the two players are. And Dwight Howard's the best center in basketball when he's healthy. <clears throat> uh, certainly, you know, right at the top. I, and Jeremy's not hes not at that level as a player. He's not going to put up the kind of numbers that Dwight Howard can put up. I mean, Dwight Howard's already led a team to the finals in 2009. He's still relatively young. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's the way it goes. That's the business of basketball. I mean, that's reality. I know Les Alexander does not want to get rid of Jeremy Lin. I'm sure of that. But, again, if you are forced to make a decision between Dwight Howard and Jeremy Lin, you're going to pick Dwight Howard. Now, here's the thing I will say to to Lin fans. If Jeremy gets traded, then the Lynn haters are going to throw a party for two reasons. The first reason is, if Jeremy is let go, they're going to pretend that it was because Jeremy was a bust last year, which is completely false. Totally false. It, you know, you'll hear stuff like, well, see... They got rid of him because Patrick Beverly outplayed him and all this stuff. That's nonsense. But it's going to happen. I'll tell you right now. If Jeremy gets dealt so that Dwight Howard can come to Houston, you will hear that. You are going to hear that. That just, you know, ridiculous line of thinking. And that's what we refer to as revisionist history. 
something happened. And then you go back and, you know, you you revise why it supposedly happened. So the revising here would be, well, Jeremy wasn't any good last year, and that's why they got rid of him. And that's that's absurd. If they get rid of him, they're getting rid of him because they want to clear up salary cap space. Patrick Beverly doesn't cost much. Chandler Parsons doesn't cost much. Jeremy has a bigger deal a bigger contract than those two players. So that's, if you're a Lynn fan, I would tell you, prepare for that. You're going to hear that. And it's nonsense, but it will be said. The second reason why the Lynn haters will throw a party if Lynn's gone and Dwight Howard comes in is because Houston is going to be a serious contender if they have Dwight Howard and James Harden and Chandler Parsons. And so Lynn haters don't want him to be on a great team. They want to keep him as far away from a great team as they possibly can and keep him away from having great teammates. That's why they were so upset when James Harden was traded to Houston last year because if you play with great teammates, you look better. If you play on a contending team, you look better, which is why I always told you guys last year, the only thing that matters is winning, because if you win, it doesn't matter what your stats are. But if you don't win, you can have great stats and nobody cares. And so for Lynn haters, they want to keep him out of the spotlight. Now, when he was in New York, he was on the biggest stage in basketball. If he's playing on a contender, he's going to have a lot of attention. If, you know, if Jeremy goes and plays for the Milwaukee Bucks and they're not any good, then he's not going to get much attention. And that's what the Lynn haters want. So they'll be happy if he's traded, if Houston's a contender. So, again, if you're a Lynn fan, prepare for that. You need to know that's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of celebration because they think Jeremy's going to get punked out. And that's just, that's reality. That's psychology and that's the way that people think. And, you know, it's just something you have to know about. Look, what's most important for Jeremy is that he goes somewhere where he can play, where he can get a lot of minutes, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. Jeremy was great in New York, as we know, when he got his time, and then he hurt his knee. Last year, most of the year was about Jeremy getting his knee back and about learning a new system and working on weaknesses, you know, outside shooting, uh, these types of things, and meshing with new teammates. If you're a player and you have to play for three different teams in three different seasons, that's not good because it, it there's always a learning curve whenever you go to a new team, and that slows down your progress as a player. You know, So if Jeremy has to play for New York and then play for Houston and then play for another team in three different years, he's probably not going to develop as quickly as a player. And again, you know, that's that's going to make Lynn haters happy and it's going to frustrate Lynn fans. But Jeremy's at a good place in his own life. He's got a good contract, meaning he's going to make money. He's making money. He's not on the couch. He doesn't have to worry about money. And if you're worrying about money, it's hard to focus on your game. So now Jeremy's at a place where, you know, he doesn't have to think about that. Now, if he gets traded to a place where he's, you know, in a situation where he'll be a backup, well, that's not as good. For example, if Jeremy is sent to the Los Angeles Lakers, he's not going to start. He's not going to start ahead of Steve Nash. That's not going to happen, even with Mike D'Antoni there. Um, So what I'm trying to say is the upcoming season – for Jeremy could be a little bit of a step back for him 
if he's traded and he goes somewhere where he's not the starter. And so as Lynn fans, we need to prepare for that. That's a possibility now. I think it's a realistic possibility. On the other hand, it doesn't matter. What what matters most importantly is that Jeremy improves his game. That is, his mindset is positive, even if he wasn't the starter somewhere next year. And that he's healthy. Jeremy knows he can start. Jeremy knows what he's capable of. His confidence is not going to go down if he goes to a situation and he doesn't start, like if he goes and backs up Steve Nash. So that's a good thing. He already knows what he can do in the league, and everybody else knows too. So that's the situation. I mean, that's the scenario that's going on right now. That's what I'm hearing. I know I was asked in in the comments of another of our recent videos by, I believe, Richard Yao, you know, Paul, what do you think? What do you think about, you know, possibility of Jeremy getting traded and Dwight Howard coming to Houston? This is this is what I'm hearing. This is what I think right now. now. Here today on June 6th, 2013, I do think there's a realistic chance Jeremy might get moved in order for Houston to clear up salary cap space. Even though I don't think Houston wants to trade him. I don't think Les Alexander wants to trade him. And I can guarantee you they're afraid, meaning Les Alexander and Daryl Morey, owner and the general manager of Houston, they're afraid that Jeremy's going to burn him again the way that he burned him when he did Lynn Sandy 1.0 in New York. So I'm sure that concerns them. But if you have a chance to get Dwight Howard, you're going to get Dwight Howard. You're going to pick Dwight Howard over Jeremy Lin. And let's come back to Dwight Howard here. And this is very important. If Jeremy Lin gets traded from the Houston Rockets, then the one person I would blame for that happening is Dwight Howard. Because if Dwight Howard told his circle of friends, told his intermediaries, you know, people in the media and stuff that he knows, if he told them to tell Houston, I don't want Dwight, I don't want Jeremy Lynn traded, then Jeremy Lynn wouldn't be traded. But that doesn't seem to be happening. What Ron from the G said on Clutch Fans is that Dwight Howard sending out message that he doesn't want Ashik traded. Well, if you're a Houston organization, you know what that means. That means, well, I guess Jeremy Lin's expendable. So if Jeremy gets dealt, blame Dwight Howard. That would be my opinion. That's what this looks like. And, you know, we'll see how it plays out if that happens. Um, uh, if I were Dwight Howard, I would want to play with Jeremy Lin big time. Not just because Jeremy's good, but because Jeremy will, is going to help you as an individual market yourself in Asia and other places where Jeremy is, is popular. So I don't know what Dwight Howard's thinking. Maybe he just, he does as a basketball player, just values Ashik more than he values Jeremy. Maybe he's getting bad advice from people in his circle telling him that Jeremy's really not that good. We, as Lynn fans, we know all about that. There are a lot of people around the NBA, players and fans, particularly fans, they don't respect Jeremy Lynn. And not only do they not respect him, they don't want him to succeed. And, you know, sometimes that type of thinking can influence decision making. I I hope that's not happening to Dwight Howard because playing with Jeremy Lin would be very good for Dwight Howard, particularly on pick and rolls and stuff. Uh, But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's not up to us, really. It's up to, to the decision makers in this process, which is Dwight Howard and the Rockets. I will say this, though, finally, 
If you're a Jeremy Lin fan and you don't want him to get traded from Houston, now's the time to let the organization know that. Because if they're putting out a trial balloon, as I said, if they're sending out people to clutch fans and to different sites to try to test how people are going to react to the idea that Jeremy might get traded, well, now's the time to tell them you don't want Jeremy traded. So, you know, hit him up on Twitter, hit him up on Facebook, emails, whatever. If you want Jeremy to stay in Houston, now's the time to, to let your voice be heard. Because if you don't make it heard, then they're going to think, well, I guess people are okay with it. So we'll see. This is how, you know, this is the business of basketball. This is a good example of how decisions get made in the NBA. Uh, you have to make choices. You know, are you going to choose Dwight Howard? Are you going to choose Jeremy Lin? If you're Dwight Howard, uh, would you rather keep Oshik around? Would you rather keep Lin around? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is a good example, a case study of how this gets done. And uh, look, that's the latest. Uh, I hope Jeremy stays in Houston because they're going to be good. And, and Jeremy was there already for a year. He's stable there. Am I going to be, you know, sad and crying if Jeremy gets traded? No, because I believe in Jeremy. Jeremy's going to do well as long as he stays healthy anywhere he goes. If he does get traded, hopefully he'll get traded to a premier franchise like the Lakers. I don't think he's going back to New York. So, you know, hopefully he'll he'll get to a place that's really good uh, or, or that can develop him. The Lakers would seem to be the, the top place based upon Mike D'Antoni being the coach there, at least he is right now, and because they're a premier franchise and they need a point guard uh, soon. You've got two players on the roster, Steve Nash and Steve Blake, that are aging. Nash is going to be 40 years old next year. Steve Blake, I believe, is going to be 34 years old next year. So they need talent at that position. And uh, Jeremy would be, I'm sure, be uh, loved if he played in L.A. Um, so you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully he can stick around in Houston. But as I said, I think uh, let your voices be heard to the Rockets organization if you want them to stay there and prepare for the possibility that he might not be there in Houston next year. So, you know, we'll see how it ends up. Uh, okay, that's it for now. Uh, it's good to be able to do this update. I know I haven't talked to you guys in a while, I think, since, since the, uh, at least on Jeremy, since the, um, well, John did his wrap-up video, which we talked to you guys, and, of course, since the uh, the Knicks got eliminated by the Pacers. So I'm enjoying the playoffs tremendously. Um, I think the finals is going to be great between Miami and San Antonio. I made one video about that, basically the, how the finals are the Kobe Armageddon finals. And um, I might make another video about that, doing a prediction. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a chance to do that or not. But look, it's never dull. It's never a dull moment here in Jeremy Lindland. So, you know, as I told you guys, Jeremy's going to do well wherever he is. I need to get some information, some intelligence about what Jeremy's doing so far this summer. I just haven't had the opportunity to really put my ear to the ground and, and look for that yet. But I will start doing that soon, probably after the finals are over. Um, I'm excited for, for Jeremy's next year, wherever he is. He's, like I said, he's more settled in. He's got his money. He's over the knee injury. And I'm really looking for him to add aspects to his game, particularly the outside shooting, but other aspects as well. Things that we've gone over here, things that I know his shooting coach, Doc, has talked about, things that Jeremy knows he needs to do to become a better player. Every player has to do that, no matter who they are. Unless you're, you know, the last year or two of your career and you're on the downside and you've, you know, you've already done everything you can do. If you look at LeBron James, he improves every single year. 
Last year, he added more post game. And when he got to Miami, he had to learn to play off of the ball more, meaning without the ball in his hands. And he's done that. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade really, truly needs to get a better jump shot in his game. And he hasn't really done that, or he hasn't been able to do it. Uh, You know, he's had trouble with his knees and stuff, and he, he should do that. If he did that, his game would be much better. So where Jeremy's at is where many players are at. You got to keep improving. And we know that. And as Jeremy does that, he'll become even better and better and get more respect and get more playing time. So um, we'll see what happens. I you know, look, We'll keep updating you guys as we get more information. Um, as I said, I, I hope Jeremy can stay. But uh, I do understand the business aspect of this. If you need more money and Dwight Howard isn't telling you to keep Jeremy Lin, well, you know, there's a chance he's going to get moved. So, okay, that's the latest. Your comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down in this video. Uh, of course, we encourage you to come and join the CNM Facebook group, which has over 2,500 members and growing. Once again, I am Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Looking forward to talking with you guys in the comments. I hope you're enjoying the, the NBA playoffs as much as I am. And I hope everybody's having a great summer uh, or unofficial summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, like Australia, um, I guess it's kind of late autumn heading to winter, and uh, I hope things are, I hope you're having a good fall slash winter right now, too. Talk to you soon. Take care.